This is the brand new Fitbit Charge 6. I've been using it for the last little while, putting it through its paces to see how well it works. With it are a host of new features, some of them more sporty and some of them more just day-to-day -day usefulness. In this review, I'm gonna walk through all those new features step-by-step, -step, telling you how well they actually work in real life. After that, we're gonna dive through the user interface and show you all the basics from like a daily tracking standpoint as well as a sports standpoint. And then from there, we're gonna dive into accuracy. So don't skip that section because that's actually pretty important in the grand scheme of things. And then finally, some final recommendations. With that, let's just get started in all of the newness. The very first thing to know is that, of course, the price, 159 bucks. But the actual first thing to know is there's a new button in town or well the buttons back in town the button on the left hand side there uh, in the previous edition they went to like a touch button that didn't actually exist now it's a physical button that you can press which i know sounds silly but it's so nice to have a physical button back there it just makes it a lot easier the next thing to note is the addition of a new heart rate sensor. Uh, Fitbit claims that this new heart rate sensor is significantly more accurate than the previous one, primarily in workouts. Uh, now, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. One of the things that Fitbit said, though, is they took a lot of the algorithms, the machine learning, the AI, they call the AI, I'd say it's more machine learning, uh, from the Google Pixel Watch 1 uh, and pulled it into this unit here. Now, they are separate sensors. This is a Google Pixel Watch 2 right here, but the sensor on this just simply would not physically fit into the band on the Fitbit Charge so we are seeing some differences there. Now with that new sensor, they are bringing heart rate broadcasting. That means that you can go ahead and pair your heart rate to other third-party apps and devices. So something like the Peloton bike. Now using the feature is pretty darn easy. You're gonna swipe down from the top there and choose heart rate on equipment, tap that and it starts broadcasting. Meanwhile, over on the app or device that you wanna to pair to, you're gonna see the charge six, you'll tap that. And then back on the watch, you'll confirm that. So basically like an authentication of sorts, permission if you will. Uh, and then you'll see the heart rate on your screen. That all works great. The one caveat is sometimes that whole like confirmation process gets confused and trips over itself and you have to do it a couple times. That was my experience anyways on the Peloton bike. Uh, but once it's locked, it's good. And perhaps that's something they'll sort out over time to make it a little more seamless. Now, after recording the video, I found a couple more scenarios where things started to fall apart a bit. Uh, one of them is applications that don't support encryption. In fact, virtually no applications actually support encryption of your heart rate data. Unfortunately, Fitbit has decided to encrypt the heart rate data broadcasted off this, which is not something that's normal in the industry, and thus you're gonna find a lot of scenarios where it won't work. Here on Zwift on Apple TV, it does work, but it fails a few times, then it finally does work. But on my phone, as well as other bike computers and stuff like that, it simply doesn't work because it's not designed to work with encryption because again, nobody actually uses it. Hopefully that's something they'll remove because it's simply not needed. It's not a feature anyone has asked for, and instead it just breaks the heart rate broadcasting on most devices. Now the next new item is the addition of 20 new sport modes, but that's actually not the important part. The 20 new sport modes are great and all that fun stuff, bringing it up to about 40 new sport modes. The big ticket item here is the fact that you can now see all of those sport modes on the watch without like having to define what six that you wanted. On the Fitbit Charge 5, you had to say these were the six sport modes that I want. And if you wanted more than that, you had to go to the phone and set it. It was just a complete mess and really unnecessary. Uh, now you can just simply swipe through the list until you find the sport mode you want and then do the sport you want. It's just simple and functional. And hey, just a quick note before the next item, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, if you could just whack the like or subscribe button, it really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, there's the new YouTube music controls. Uh, now the way this works is it controls music on your phone on the YouTube music app. Does not matter whether you have iOS, so basically an iPhone or Android, uh, works equally on both of them. In fact, that's true for every feature here. It works just fine. This is in fact an iPhone that I'm using to keep my notes somewhat straight. You can swipe over on the Charge 6 to the YouTube music control panel and then swipe down to access your playlist. You can then play whatever music you want. Of course, it's still playing back on headphones or on your phone, depending on how you're configured. There's no direct connection between the Charge 6 and Bluetooth audio devices. It's just simply doing the thing from your phone and controlling your phone. After that, we've got another Google feature, which is Google Maps. Uh, so this is Google Maps turn-by-turn -turn integration. Again, the same process to go ahead and authenticate to the Google Maps app on your phone, whether again, be iOS or Android. And then once you got all of that stuff sorted out, it'll show you those turn prompts automatically on the band. So whether you're driving or walking, whatever the case is, you'll immediately start getting those turn-by-turn -turn notifications uh, on the Charge 6 from the Google Maps app. Uh, you can pause that if you want to, and it basically just shows you each turn successively as you go through them and what you should be doing, go left, right, etc. Uh, for most people, while they're driving, it's probably really not that useful. But if you're walking, it's nice to have your phone in your pocket and just see the directions uh, turn by turn. 
After that, there is the third app in the trifecta of Google and Fitbit integration. Now it's very clear these two teams, these two portions of the company are actually talking to each other and you're seeing all these Google and Fitbit services, including a Google Wallet integration. Again, no requirement for Android phone or anything like that. The way it works here is you go ahead and you once again authenticate a bunch of times. There's actually way more prompts this time around. You're gonna agree like 95 times. Once you've got all that set, you'll be able to access your Google Wallet. Google Wallet is different than Google Pay, just to be clear. Uh, Google Wallet is a thing tied to your Google account on the interwebs that has credit cards preloaded into it. Uh, so I had four different credit cards there. I then chose one of those credit cards to add to this. You can choose more, I just chose one. Uh, and then you can basically just tap to pay with things. It's again, relatively straightforward once you get it set up and go through all those I agree type prompts. Next new feature is the new Zoom magnifier. Uh, this allows you to simply tap the screen three times and it'll go zoom in. It's really straightforward here. It's an accessibility feature. Uh, you do have to enable that first in the settings, so you swipe down, you can enable it in the display settings there, and then again, that just simply tap three times, zoom in, and you're good to go. Now the last housekeeping item before we get into uh, the user interface portions is the battery life, which is claimed at seven days. Generally speaking, Fitbit's pretty good at their battery life claims being relatively conservative. Uh, and so far, I think we're trending about right. I've had a couple weird quirks with charging in like the lower levels where it shows a whole bunch of random numbers like just in a couple second span. But that, setting that aside, once I get it fully charged, it does seem to be chugging along just fine. Also of note is that you do have to convert your Fitbit account to a Google account. Google's been warning about this for like two years now and the time has finally come. Uh, if you want to use either the Charge 6 or the Pixel Watch 2, uh, both of those watches require a Google account. The conversion process is trivial. Just a couple taps and boom, your Fitbit account becomes a Google account. There's a whole bunch of rules they agreed to with the EU and others around that and what they do with your data and all that kind of stuff. You can read about it on the interwebs. Uh, the point of the matter is that you do have to convert your account over if you want to use this. Okay, so this is the main watch space. You can customize this if you want to, choose different ones. Uh, if you swipe down from the top, you'll access the controls menu. This is where you'll see the Google Wallet option there. You'll see do not disturb mode, there's sleep mode, basically turn the display off at night, and the heart rate on equipment that I mentioned earlier on for broadcasting a heart rate. Keep on swiping up, you got screen wake to auto, or you can turn it to manual if you want to. The find phone option will basically buzz your phone. Uh, and then you keep on going, water lock if you're going to go swimming, or settings to dive into display settings, quiet modes, heart rate, and so on. Uh, kind of all the settings bits that you mentioned, or would expect, sorry, uh, as well as the magnify that I talked about earlier on for going in and triple tapping to magnify things. Uh, you saw me just swipe from the left there to kind of back out again, and then I can swipe up from the bottom to access my dashboard. This is basically showing my steps that I did today, so uh, 7,800 steps today, 3.74 miles. I also had a swim in there, but this does not track open water swims, so I didn't wear it on the swim, and I used another watch instead for tracking that. If I were to swipe up there, I'll see my hourly activity. So six out of 14 hours. Uh, it wasn't a, wasn't a strong day because I did have that swim in there. I didn't take it with me for a couple hours on that. Uh, and then I've got my heart rate. So right now, 76 beats per minute. I got my sleep last night, had a very late night uh, flight arrival in in a very early morning. So not a great night of sleep. In fact, Fitbit agrees with that, saying my sleep score is 54. I would agree with that, 57, sorry. I would agree with that as well. Uh, my sleep, my, I'm, I'm hurting today. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> readiness score. This is the daily readiness score. This is one component part of the Fitbit Premium. And here I would say that's one, that's probably accurate too. That's about how I'm feeling right now. Then you got your SpO2 score, your blood oxygenation score, 96%. And then my exercise for the week uh, today is only Tuesday, so basically just uh, one of those five days so far. Uh, now, if I were to swipe back up the top here to get back to that watch face, you don't have to, but you can just swipe to the right. You'll see the notifications. I can then swipe up here. Uh, you can see my wife just saying she's no worries. She's walking over this way. And then swiping again, this is the exercise modes. Uh, now, I can swipe up to change the different modes. I go to more and you can see all those 39 different sport modes uh, right there. Again, you can find a whole list of these on Fitbit's site. But if I go back here, you can see the last one I used was run. When I tap that, uh, you'll see it's then gonna try to find GPS. GPS connecting, and you'll see that top little status icon right there, and that's the, basically the GPS lock once it finds it, as well as uh, I can swipe up here to set a goal, uh, and I keep on going to set laps if I want to. I can turn heart rate zone notifications on, GPS on, run detect on, auto pause, auto stop, always on display on. I prefer that when I'm running, so it's just always on all the time. And then once I'm ready to go here, uh, once it's found GPS, uh, and it has not found it yet because it hasn't locked on, uh, I would just simply tap the start button there, and I would start to see the timer there. Uh, I can tap this middle option to change the different basically main data fields. So pace average, there you can see GPS just connected, but then it lost it again. Yeah, and the problem here is that this, this band is not super great when it comes to GPS, uh, despite me just sitting here doing nothing. Uh, anyways, tap through these here, 
these are the different uh, main basically pages that you can configure to see it in the workout. Again, you're not going to have a ton of customization on this. You can customize a little bit of this, but there's not a ton because of the fact that uh, this isn't really designed to be a sports watch, but more just kind of daily activity tracker. Uh, now, once you're done with your activity, you tap pause there, and then you tap finish at the end, and you'll get a bit of a summary here. Here's a, a different summary from uh, one of my runs that I did, so you can see what that looks like for a normal activity. Uh, now, swiping back out of this, we're going to go to the right here. You can see you can set alarms if you want to. You can set timers. Uh, this is an EDA scan. Uh, so basically, you sit there for three minutes, and it tells you how stressed out you are. You can see a little bit of a, a video of me doing this back a couple days ago. Uh, again, the same functionality they've had in the past. And the idea here is that you could basically do breathing exercises or other things, uh, or track that stress over time, uh, and you know try to aim to reduce that particular stress. Now, swiping to the right, you've got the ECG functionality. Uh, in this case, you would put the watch on your wrist, as you see right here, and then you basically go ahead and touch the sides to do that ECG. Uh, this takes about 30 seconds. And then when you're done, you get a report saying whether or not you had a normal or abnormal sinus rhythm, as well as a report you can access from the Fitbit app. Swiping out again, you have the Google Maps integration that I talked about earlier. And again, the YouTube music integration that I talked about earlier. And then finally, you're back to the watch homepage there. So with the hands-on section covered, let's talk about accuracy. There's basically three components to accuracy, or three core components anyways. Uh, there is sleep tracking accuracy, there's heart rate accuracy, and there is GPS accuracy. Starting off with sleep tracking accuracy, that's kind of the easy one. Uh, in my mind, I'm mostly focused on what time I went to sleep and what time I woke up. Did I get those two things correct? Uh, and in my testing, yeah, I nailed all those, no problem at all. Uh, the second portion of the sleep piece is whether or not I get sleep stages or phases correct. Uh, frankly, I don't put trust in any wearable to do that correctly, so I'm not going to judge that because also the technology to judge that from an accuracy standpoint is only like 80 ish or so percent accurate so that seems like you're comparing apples with pears so we're just going to throw that into the dumpster over there and move on to the next thing which is heart rate accuracy because that is easy to validate this area fitbit talked a lot about their improvements with the new sensor as well as the algorithm uh, and i saw that in my testing for example if you look at a couple of these indoor interval workouts these tracked very well with both the heart rate strap as well as even the pixel watch there uh, and other heart rate sensors i had and then if we move outdoor for some outdoor interval workouts, which are one of the more challenging things for optical sensors. It was generally pretty good. A little bit of lag though in a couple cases for some of the really hard sprints. If it was a more subtle sprint, it wasn't too bad, but the really hard sprints, it was a bit more challenging. Uh, now, the third piece is GPS accuracy, and this is where things are not, not so awesome. Uh, so one of the big challenges with the Charge 5, if I throw my phone out of the way here, uh, was the band design. So the Charge 5, the antenna, is basically along the underside of the band right there. Uh, so when you had it on in a snug way, which is the way you normally want for good heart rate accuracy, it would kill your GPS. And Fitbit basically straight up admitted this in the various uh, calls I had, and that was just a design limitation of the band. A pretty poor one, if you ask me, that you can't use GPS with heart rate, but that was that. So I was hoping in the Charge 6 that might be fixed. And when I asked them about this, they said it would be unfortunately relatively similar to the Charge 5. However, there was the new heart rate algorithm. So in theory, you could loosen a bit more and the heart rate algorithm might be able to compensate for that. Um, no, that didn't, that didn't work at all. So a couple different scenarios here, I went out and I tested things. Uh, first, I went out for a run where I had it at the normal snugness level, which is basically two right there. This is normal workout snugness. Again, you want it snug for accuracy from a heart rate standpoint. Uh, and when I did that, it would rarely get GPS at all. And when it did, it would lose it almost immediately. Uh, so then I moved it to the next setting, uh, which is the very last setting on this particular band size. And you can see it's pretty floppy. And there's a hole, I can see through the hole and I can see you in the camera. That's a horrible setting for heart rate accuracy. If I did that, it mostly stayed connected, but not always. So now you can still use your phone if you want to, if I hadn't thrown it on the ground there. Uh, you can use your phone as GPS instead for outdoor workouts. And if you do that in combination with snugging up, the snugging up, snuggling up, making the band tighter, then you're basically fine. Then you've got perfectly functional heart rate accuracy for this type of device, as well as decent GPS accuracy. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I've got a whole bunch more of those GPS data sets if you want in my written review. That's linked down below in the doohickey there, uh, where I go into that in much more painful detail. So where do we stand overall on the Charge 6? Well, here's the thing. From like an overall feature standpoint, they added a ton of new features. I think if you've got like a Charge 
anything through Charge 4. Um, in that case, it's a pretty clear major upgrade, especially with the newer display coming from the Charge 5, which is also here on the Charge 6, uh, and all the new features that are part of this from a YouTube and Google, et cetera, standpoint. If you're coming from a Charge 5, then you're probably asking yourself, do you want those three core integrations around Google? So Google Maps, uh, Google Wallet, as well as Google Music, uh, as well as perhaps the heart rate broadcasting. Those are, I think, in my mind, the really big ticket items. Uh, but there are, of course, all those additional sport modes and stuff like that. Still, for 159 bucks, this is a pretty good deal, especially for something that lasts seven days per charge. Uh, that's you know generally not the case for most of the AMOLED displays that you see on a lot of the watches, like the Pixel Watch 2 here, which lasts about a day, day and a half, give or take. Anyways, if you found this video interesting and useful, give it a like down the bottom or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness, including the Pixel Watch 2 review dropping soonish, like really soon, but uh, you know, it's pretty nice here, so uh, maybe not exactly soon. With that, have a good one.